All right, let's, let's, let's go through this again, yeah? So first and foremost, let's take a look at this. Breaking. The NALCSPA has asked LCS players to vote Sunday on a walkout in protest of changes to the NACL. If we have 26 out of 50 of the LCS players willing to do something, I can tell you right now, the league's not running. More in my story below. Let's just read this on Substack here. Professional League of Legends players in the LCS, the game's premier North American Esports League, would be called to vote on a proposal to stage a walkout in protest of recent changes to the region's amateur circuit. The Regional Players Association, the LCSPA, intends to host the vote on Sunday at 8.30pm PT, Pacific Time. If successful, it will be among the first major instances of collective action at the highest level of esports. The proposed walkout targets a recent decision by Riot Games, which publishes League and oversees its esports to change a rule that required Tier 1 teams to field an amateur roster in the game's Challengers League NACL, which serves as a talent pipeline to the LCS. On May 12th, Riot announced it would be removing that requirement in response to requests by team owners. Soon after, a majority of LCS teams announced they would be cutting their NACL rosters with some siding and need to streamline operations in light of economic headwinds. Phil Aram, all mid or random. Uh, all random, all mid. The LCSPA's executive director said the group was not informed in advance of Riot's decision, which he characterized as a significant breach of trust. If that's true, that's kind of fucked up. Riot lied to us, Aram said, and, and the outcome of that lie is that half of our players' jobs are gone overnight. That is, that is kind of fucked up. The executive council of LCSPA, which is made up of five professional players, voted Monday night Pacific time to authorize a vote among association members who would, a would be asked to participate in the walkout, the 50 players in the LCS. The LCSPA informed players of the executive council's vote on Tuesday morning via Discord. It would be so funny if I read like a top reddit com comment where they just say uh, they're only walking out because they want a vacation. <laughs> That's gonna be 100% that take. The executive council of LCSPA which is made up of five professional players voted Monday night pacific time to authorize a vote among association members who would be asked to participate in the walkout the 50 players in the LCS. The LCSPA informed players of the executive council's vote on Tuesday morning via discord. Many players in the LCS are graduates of the amateur circuit including some, some members of the players association executive council. Playing academy was what gave me the opportunity to play in LCS tweeted executive council member Mohamed Revenge Kadura uh, responding to LCSPA's statement condemning, condemning Riot's announcement. This would easily, easily kill the future of the LCS, he added. The decision by the Executive Council followed a week of behind-the-scenes lobbying by the Players Association directed at Riot, Aram said. On May 6th, the pseudonymous 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 du, 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 pseudonymous League Esports Twitter account LCS EV tweeted that all 10 LCS teams had voted to remove the requirement to field an NSCL team. The account also shared that the teams had pushed for the requirement to end before the beginning of the summer NACL season. The account also shared that the teams had pushed for the requirement to end before the beginning of the summer NACL season. After that tweet, Aram said the Players Association made several entities to Riot offering compromises that might reduce costs for teams without dismantling the NACL. Those culminated in an 11th hour call between Aram and Riot, where Riot announced that it had made its decision to remove the requirement. Every step of the way, they've shown us that there was no plan, there is no commitment, Aram said. The only commitment is to, is to giving these teams an out without any consideration for what the impact is. It's just shameful, especially for a group that three or four weeks ago was saying, we're building the future of sports. Aram said he communicated to Riot, the Players Association would consider a strike over the decision. We cannot go in, go and be in the room with Riot and have meaningful negotiations of any kind like we've had in the past, unless we're able to establish with them that the actions that they took without our consent without consideration for us or for the league, in this case, are not acceptable. Agreed. Agreed. It is an important important inflection point for our players. Steve Arhanset, co-CEO of LCS franchise org Team Liquid, said on May 16th that he voted to change the rule to alleviate economic pressures on other teams in the league. We have to sometimes make decisions on the best interests of the teams as a collective, rather than the self-interest of Team Liquid, hence our decision. Arhanset said in a video in which he addressed the change. Team Liquid is one of the three LCS organizations that has announced it will continue to participate in the NACL. A number of esports organizations have made drastic cuts in recent months, citing waning interest in and investment in esports. The trend has been called the esports winter and has inspired New York Times articles about the scene's myriad of woes. 
There has been way too much hype and too little of actual value, Rod Breslau, a former eSport journalist, told the New York Times. I think this is Slasher. But on Twitter and in, in interviews, Adam has stressed that the cost of maintaining an NACL squad are marginal in the context of an LCS team's broader eSports expenditures. He also alleged that Riot had dispersed $3 million this year to each LCS team from a league revenue pool, citing contacts among team ownership groups. Adam is a former executive at Evil Geniuses, an LCS team. If you're a team getting that much money and you can't operate, you know, our belief is that is you're not a partner that's right for the league and you ought to be replaced, not to be given a new handout. <sighs> Adam is pissed. The Players Association has agitated for players in the past. Has agitated for players in the past. That's kind of a weird sentence. Notably, in 2021, it revert its investigation into alleged bullying by TSM CEO and co-founder Andy Dinn over to Riot. The LCS resulting competitive ruling handed down in 2022 included a historic 75,000 fine, fine and a two-year probation for DIN. The LCS season is slated to resume June 1st, but if players vote to walk out, Aram says the franchise organizations may find it hard to field their teams. If we have 26 out of 50 of the LCS players willing to do something, I can tell you right now, the league's not running. You know, the craziest thing. The craziest thing, I know how players think, and the fact is, the fact is, the fact that LCS starts so damn early, right? The fact that the LCS starts so damn early is definitely a motivator for players to walk out, but it's a minor detail. Uh, let's take a look at this now. Our ask of Riot. Institute Valorant style promotion and relegation between the LCS and NACL. Riot commit to a revenue pool for player salaries of 300k per NACL team per year. So we talked about this earlier and basically it turns out that the Valorant scene has a two year like two year commitment of each team and they chose their partners and there was no buy in so uh, you can qualify to the Valorant circuit. Um, and then they chose partners to start the league. Uh, based off of their bids to join uh, the Valorant circuit. Riot commit to a revenue pool for player salaries of 300k per NACL team per year. So that's three, 3 million. I think that's reasonable. And I think that's um, very reasonable. Allow LCS orgs to partner with affiliates for cost sharing. Okay. Um, is, that's... I thought that's something that is allowed. Um, I thought Koi and Rogue did essentially this, right? Allow LCS orgs to partner with affiliates for cost sharing. Okay. Uh, Riot guarantees LCS minimum contracts for the following year for the five players who win the LCS Summer Finals each year. Is there a scenario where there's players that won and didn't have a job after? Has there ever been a case? I don't understand why this is necessary. Riot guarantees LCS minimum contracts for the following year for the five players who win the LCS Summer Finals each year. Has there ever been a case where someone wins the league and then doesn't play anymore? Uh, this this is kind of strange. I don't know why, why, why this is there. Institute a 3 uh, out of 5 roster continuity role, rule to provide players on release NSL rosters first priority in maintaining their slots in the upcoming NSL season if a majority continue to compete together. I think that's a good rule. I like that rule. I like the last rule. I think this second one is very fair and I think it makes sense. I am just checking the comments if there is like clarity exactly on what the Valorant thing is. Like this this I don't have an issue with either, right? If 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 like there's that like orcs partner with, with affiliates, you know? I think that's perfectly fine. The thing is, it's like this part here, right, guarantees LCS minimum contracts for the following year for the five players who win the LCS Summer Final each year. This is like very little money in the grand scheme of things. But I don't really think it's necessary either. I think if you win the finals and you can't land the job, like... Let me just see if I can pull up, like, I can Google, maybe? Finishing in top eight. So basically, they invited teams and you finish top eight, you then secure a position if you finish top eight. That we understand. And then the remaining four teams will have to compete in a play-in relegation tournament. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think that's a cool system, but 
I don't see a world where they would agree to this. Because I think it's important to keep in mind what are, why are teams doing this in the first place, right? Why did they want to get rid of the NECL? They didn't have malicious intent. They believe in the idea of saving money, right? It's like they want to save money. And in a world where a Valorant-style promotion or relegation system is in place, acquiring money will be even more difficult. And the teams that have already, like, players on contract have such a massive advantage. Massive advantage. So I, I feel like this, this needs to be, like, prepared way ahead of time in order to even constitute the idea of it. I think a very big issue for the LCS, right, is that franchising actually managed to achieve something. In essence, it did manage to promote investment, right? But the mismanagement of the funds of those investments or the promises of those investments were, you know, I don't know how they, like, I, I, I don't know how that played out, you know? Because millions and millions were thrown into any LCS teams. And that money, money has dried up, right? But I also don't have enough economical, like, literacy to know how far ahead of time teams are, like, planning their expenditures, right? I wonder if, like, teams can stay afloat for, like, three years with their escrow, right? Or are they consistently just scraping for cash? The key thing here, right, is Riot's involvement. Because Riot has a lot of ego and incentive to make sure that the LCS stays afloat. Because that studio is right across from the Riot campus. It's like the, the level of embarrassment that would come with it would trickle down to everything else. Well, I think this is not going to happen. First one is not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I think the second one, I think that's... It's like the second one is, is, is the juicer, you know? And then... Yeah, I think the second one, that's where I think they can score a win. But I don't think the first one's going to happen. Yeah, I think, I don't know, the placement of both leagues was, like, both both placing the European League in Berlin, that was a huge mistake. And then placing the other league in California, it's, it's hard to, to pick worse places. <laughs> like, genuinely. Like, it's, it's genuinely hard to pick worse places. Because Berlin, for the longest time, shit internet. Berlin is so expensive. The airport, terrible. The internet, terrible. But Berlin, like, sure, over the last years, the prices in Berlin have skyrocketed. Like, insanely skyrocketed. I think the NBA thing only works because there's actually, like, geographical significance Geogra the, the geographical significance is the big advantage that uh, the teams have. How ingrained sports is in day-to-day -day culture, right? It's like, it stretches back to the idea of the gladiators, where everyone came together in the Colosseum to, to watch sports for entertainment. It's, it, of course, it's like, for example, I will dominate. He's a, he's a, he's a Miami Heat fan. Isn't he from Florida? Or am I crazy now? <laughs> Maybe I'm crazy. I thought he's from Florida. It's, it's like, I love Zlatan Ibrahimovic. I grew up in Sweden. He's, he, he represented us. Right? But that's... Everything is happening online. And the amount of re revenue you can generate online is... It's like, esports fans are worth so little. And esports fan have, have fans have been quite spoiled. Like in any other sport, fans generate revenue. But in but in esports, not so much. Everything is free in esports. 
it's like there's advertisement but even twitch twitch is a, a platform that doesn't have uh, the level of like targeted ads that google adsense does yeah we spend on skins but that's very very like the game is is it's like esports is a way of advertising the game that's what it is right the game the esports side advertises the game i'm pretty i'm 100 sure that riot makes a negative okay they 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 spend more than they make 100 like if you just look at the number okay but their gain is of course in the advertisement value of each league it's marketing it's a marketing cost they are spending a shit ton to keep all the leagues operated and op running right in the context of this, I, I, I like, my, my final comment is just, I kind of want to, I hope it happens. I hope it happens. I hope the walkout happens because I'm just curious what kind of impact it has. I think the part where the player association wasn't involved in this at all is definitely very scummy. And I think that if they don't do the walkout, then the LCS Player Association can just cease to exist today if they don't do the walkout. If they don't do the walkout, it means that they have no power. So what's the point? You're just doing angry tweets at that point. You're shouting at clouds. So I hope this walkout happens because I want to see how that plays out.